which browser offers the best fingerprinting tracking out of the box. Now, if you are confused, fingerprinting is your digital DNA. Um, so websites can read everything from your screen size, fonts, GPU, installed extensions, even your battery level, and they could use this to track you across the internet. They don't need cookies, they don't need permissions, and there are no opt-outs. It's the most widely used form of tracking people experience. Interestingly, there are some browsers that claim to protect you, but they might be silently exposing you. So my goal today is to show you what browser is the safest as far as fingerprinting is concerned. I'll be running a fingerprinting protection test for all the popular browsers. Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Brave, and also some of your privacy-focused browsers like Tor and Movad. To run this test, I'll be using a tool from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. It's called Cover Your Tracks. This is one of the most respected fingerprinting tests out there. It checks how unique your browser setup is, how well it blocks trackers, and whether your fingerprint stands out or blends into the crowd. On this test, if we get a randomized fingerprint, it means you're harder to track. But a unique fingerprint means you're easily identifiable even without cookies. The goal is to see how vulnerable people are, so I'll be making this test on browsers without any hardening, any pre-modifications, just the way most people will use their browsers. Now, if you stick to the end, you might be in for a shocker because some of your so-called privacy browsers might not perform as well as you think. Let's begin with Firefox. So I'm running the fingerprinting test from Cover Your Tracks. And here is what came up. Is it protecting you from fingerprinting? Unfortunately, no. The results show that my Firefox browser has a unique fingerprint. Hence, we could say Firefox stood out and it is identifiable. In technical terms, my fingerprint reveals around 18.19 bits of entropy, which is more than enough to uniquely track this browser across websites. So despite Firefox's strong reputation for privacy, it's still leaking enough subtle information to allow tracking. Now let's move on to the Epic privacy browser and see if it does any better. I'll open the browser, navigate to the link for the test, and now I could click to run the test. The fingerprint results are very similar to Firefox. Is it protecting against fingerprinting? Sadly, again, no. Epic Browser still produces a unique fingerprint. So despite Epic's branding as a privacy-first browser, the fingerprinting test tells a different story. And to be clear, this test even notes that modern tracking techniques are subtle, evolving, and hard to detect. This simply means that what's slipping through here is just part of the picture. We keep it going, and next we have Google Chrome. Let me launch this and run the tests. Here, for fingerprint protection, we get your fingerprint is nearly unique. In other words, Chrome offers virtually no built-in protection against tracking. It's a data collector's dream. According to the test, only one in about 149,000 browsers share the same fingerprint as mine. And even though Chrome's fingerprint isn't perfectly unique, it still leaks about 17.19 bits of identifiable information. Here again, this is more than enough to track me from site to site with alarming accuracy. Now at this point, it's almost already feeling hopeless. Maybe we finally have some luck and find a browser that passes the fingerprint test. Next is Waterfox, and I'm just following the same steps to run the test. And here we can see that Waterfox is unfortunately still uniquely identifiable. In fact, we get the same fingerprinting exposure we saw with Firefox and Epic's privacy browser. And this is interesting because it suggests that most Firefox-based browsers are using similar under-the-hood components that leak the same kind of identifiable data. But we are not going to jump into conclusions just yet, and we will not lump all Firefox folks into the same category just yet. 
That would be lazy and privacy testing deserves precision. So let's move on. We go to Microsoft Edge. Let's run the test again. At this point, the results feel like deja vu. Repeatedly on all the browsers we have tried, there is zero fingerprint protection and Edge follows this trend with a unique fingerprint. At this point, you may be thinking of giving up on browsers, but let us keep it going. Next is LibreWolf. This one has a strong user base and almost a cult-like following as many folks from Firefox see it as the Firefox redemption. Let's run the tests. Here we have a nearly unique fingerprint. This is not randomized and means that we are still leaking information that can be used to track us thanks to the browser. I had some more fit in this one, well, but let's keep it going. The worst case scenario is that today we learn that there is no browser safe from fingerprinting. We are moving on to Opera and to be fair, I do not have much hope for this one. Let's run the same test. As expected, once again, we get a unique fingerprint and Opera is leaking enough information to track you across the web. Now, Brave is one of the browsers that I love. It offers a very good user experience and of late, I am beginning to see it as a good privacy option. So let's run the test and see how it fares. Now, for the first time, we are seeing a browser with randomized fingerprints. This means that although sophisticated adversaries may still be able to track you to some extent, Brave's randomization provides a very strong protection against tracking companies trying to fingerprint your browser. I did a head-to-head -head privacy analysis of Brave and some other privacy browsers. I think you'll find this to be a very interesting watch. So far, it is in the lead. Let us see if there are any other browsers that will join it. Next, we are moving on to Vivaldi. Let's run the test and we give it a few minutes to finish running. And here we are back to the most common results. Your browser has a unique fingerprint. Once more, you are easily tracked around the web even without cookies. Okay, so moving on to Flop. We run the same tests and here, now we see there is nothing new here. Your browser has a unique fingerprint. Once again, this is easily trackable via fingerprinting on the web. Really no, not much luck here. So it's time to try the Tor browser. I really used to like this one and only started losing trust in them very recently. You may check out the video where I explained why I no longer trust the Tor network and the Tor browser. But that is not why we are here, so let us proceed to run the fingerprint test. First, we give Tor some time to establish connection and now we can proceed with the test. The results are in and this is an interesting one because we do not get random or unique. We are simply told we have fingerprinting protection. Well, at least we are sure this one allows you blend into the crowd rather than stick out like a sore thumb. So now that makes two of the several browsers we have tested. So far, it's been Brave and Tor browser doing a great job at fingerprint protection. Let us move on to the last one, Movad browser. So I'm running the test. Let's give it a few minutes to complete. Here, we are told that we have a non-unique fingerprint. This means our fingerprint is randomized and does not stick out. This is great for fingerprint protection. In all, we tested 12 browsers and only three are offering fingerprint protection out of the box. Brave, Tor Browser, and Movad. Now, does this mean that these are the best browsers for privacy? Well, there are other elements to consider, but fingerprinting is indeed a huge privacy issue. And so for me, this is a huge green check mark. I did a privacy browser TLS video not long ago, but today I must confess that my rankings will change a little bit. But I'll still recommend you to watch that video because you'll find it still very valid. Now, you know what browsers take that extra pain to make sure you are not trackable all over the web. 
what will you want me to test next? Also, I know this does not represent all the browsers available. So if you believe I missed any of the really good privacy browsers that would have been great for fingerprint protection, please make sure to let me know in the comment section. Also, be sure to like this video, share it, and if this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe. Till the next one, stay safe out there.